Hi everyone. So uh, I'm here to to do a like a quick video on something that I've been like that's keeping me busy. Um, I know like at least three of my subscribers is waiting for me to talk about this, the Z9, and I'm unfortunately like you know um, I'm still going through its paces and I'm not ready to talk about yet about like you know um even like even a review of it or because like the, the the way i wanted to to do that review is to be able to talk about things that other reviewers doesn't really talk about as opposed to just giving you like you know um my, my general thoughts of it and again like you know my reviews will be based on my use case and i I want to spend time more on that um, before, um, like you know, start uh, issuing like reviews. Like again, it's gonna be multi-part, but it's gonna take a while. But hopefully, it's gonna be worth it for some of you. Um, now, this one is I just want to talk about because I know that there are subscribers. I know maybe seven or eight of you are familiar with me using this as my daily driver this has been daily my daily driver for a long time since i bought this and like you know i i love hhkb and, and topre keyboards in general however the problem that i've been having over the last few months um which is especially exacerbated by you know being able to the need to um spend more time in front of the computer is that like you know my, my my old age has certainly caught up to me and i uh, i cannot uh, work or use like you know on like you know the conventional style of keyboards and i started looking around to like how do i like you know um mitigate the pain of like you know using the conventional office perifer peripherals and I've done a lot of research on that. Now I'm I'm just gonna give you like you know the short, like you know I'm not gonna give you like you know what what I've like you know what are the, the things that I've considered blah blah blah, but like you know um uh, I I I would do would tell you like you know when it comes to the keyboard I did consider like the Ergodox and like you know some of like you know the three hundred dollar Ergodox the 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 like some of the um, five hundred dollar custom ones, but I did not go for any of those. Um, but instead, I went for this one, which is not exactly cheap by any standards. Um, it's also not exactly easy on the eyes. And um, but yeah, this is what I ended up with the the adva the Kinesis Advantage Two with the brown um, brown keys. Um, uh, so just to do a quick thing over this i'm reviewing this as a as a software developer by trade um on a mac environment and for me uh this is there's really no other choice even the ergodox um isn't uh even though ergodox is compatible with a lot of other like to me the the only like you know thing that you need to 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 know about why you probably want this is that this key well that is only available to this on this keyboard on this particular um, um, model that and like you know no other no other ergonomic keyboard has this which is a huge advantage pun intended and then like mind you i didn't try any of those other keyboards um uh personally but i you know watch it youtube videos and like watching like the the like the um what's the word like how they use it like how their hands are placed on the keyboard and only the kinesis advantage has like you know the real where the the thumbs naturally rest on the keys where there's no strain on like having to 
press this in addition to pressing any of this now there's a learning curve for for um, the advantage too not gonna lie takes about a week so like you know I started with I don't know because uh, I'm normally like seven to eighty key words per minute touch typist um, yeah not very quick not not too slow not too quick above average at best but to me um, I started when I opened this one started using it it was like 20 20 minute 20 words per minute took me about a week like three days really to, to at least get, get back to about 40 words per minute and then about a week or two to go back to the usual 70 80 words per minute um, the I did not change any of the macros in here I did not customize it um, I just switched it to Mac mode but everything else is default I don't really feel the need to do any of the customizations even though I am a developer by trade which is might help or might not help but like you know life's too short for that I like if it doesn't work out of the box for me to me it's a waste of time and fortunately with the Kinesis it's it's not that so um, so the the only other modification that I needed to do for this is the, I bought one of those uh, memory foam because this is like you know very very light and it's also very hollow um, when you like you know first time you you, you 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 buy this and that's the only thing like you know there's a there's a bunch of ping especially in this area and like you know pretty much every key when you make a keystroke in a really uh, quiet room it kind of echoes like the, the keyboard ping is gets kind of annoying so you need to buy one of those like you know memory foam it could be anything um, that's you know the memory foam that's designed for keyboards you should probably be able to buy one in Amazon that's where I bought mine and fill up all the cavities that you can open this up you can open it up like you know it's not very complicated there's a bunch of screws behind the thing like you know you could you could do that put the foam in and it helps with that like you know um, reducing the ping significantly at least this way uh, in this case I still had like a bunch of ping and when I'm hitting this thing you know like you know in a you know if I press on it like really hard it would still do that but it's not as bad as like it was originally so uh, yeah so there's that so that's that so if you're on a Mac developer looking for an ergo keyboard in my opinion this is really the only uh, this is the only like you know uh, the only thing that you need to consider because um, the the ergo docs thing I I don't know they don't have this design the others that has this well key well design are like ridiculously expensive like more than five hundred dollars uh, yeah no I'm not spending money for that so this has that and then like you know the again it, well it's ugly but like what are you gonna do so I mean small price to pay for like you know having this this ergo and and again and what I do need to point out is that it did help a lot in like you know with the strip with the pain like from the moment I started using this up to now like you know I have no more wrist pain so if you you're starting to get wrist pain you really need to look into keyboards like you know this ergonomic keyboards and this is just one of the few choices that you'll need to consider um, not cheap uh, it's still around uh, $250 I think but unfortunately that's I mean it's not mass produced as the like you know the others right I mean if you're able to pay if you're willing to pay like upwards of 300 for for the HHKB this should not really be an issue for for you only because well yeah so I mean that's the 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 my recommendation on that now the real reason I wanted to do this video like today was for the other um, part of like having a uh, an ergonomic um, desk um, again I'm reviewing this as a Mac user 
as a software developer and this will probably be like you know a lot of it will is probably going to be not be applicable if you're a Linux or um, like you know or primarily on a Linux or or a Windows machine so and also um, I'm I'm reviewing this coming from someone who has been using this um, magic mouse for since it came out and one of the 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 um, features of the magic mouse that cannot be found in any other mouse is the gesture um like you know i i, I there's there's i again i also did a lot of research on this and um, as far as I'm concerned, nothing, nothing really close gets close to like you know the way Mac OS implemented or Apple implemented gestures on this. Um, get is the is the ergonomics like you know working against you? Yeah, to an extent. But uh, in in like you know in fairness to the uh, Magic Mouse, uh, like the ones who are keep saying. That this is an ergonomics nightmare they're not really reviewing the mouse right because like they're using it like this which is kind of dumb you're not supposed to you're supposed to be as like like you know flat in relation to the mouse um, as much as possible so to me it's still causing pain only because the nature of the mouse is to move then like you know use this as a pivot to move the pointer as opposed to being stationary that would be a problem for every mouse but it's not as an ergonomic nightmare as other people um, claim it to be if you're using it correctly this should not really be too much of a pain it would still be painful like you know if you're again you're getting old just like me um, which it becomes a problem now but that's not the the focus of this uh, part of the vid of the video um, the one I really want to talk about is um, this this is a a trackball from a company called Gameball. Yeah, it there the 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 trackball was supposed to be designed primarily for gaming, but um, like you know, it has like you know, settable DPI sensitivity, what have you. But I bought this for productivity again for for my own like you know, doing software development and browsing uh, you you uh, you know YouTube videos of cats and owls but anyway so um, this is not cheap <laughs> again hundred about hundred fifty dollars but again um, my, just just to, to, to mention that this is the one that I need as a Mac user is the gestures that I that I have on the Magic Mouse, and as for again, as far as I'm concerned, only this trackball that comes close. See, this has this um, touch thingies on 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 the side, so this this is vertical scrolling, and then this is the horizontal scrolling, and no other trackball has this even the Kensington ones like you know which is has mixed reviews there even the, the the top of the line Kensington doesn't even have this feature the Logitech doesn't also have any of that so I I this to me it's as a Mac user it's almost a prerequisite to have that some sort of gesture that I could or trackpad like um, aspects to a to a to, to the control otherwise it's not going to be very useful for me and and this comes somewhat close so I have the scrolling and the vertical I mean I don't have the like you know the two or three finger gestures which is I guess I would have preferred that but like you know I you can't have everything I guess um, but yeah this comes very close and the only thing that would that you would need to install on the Mac in order to make it really usable is to install I'll link it to the description um, but basically you need the the moss 
software it's a freeware um, you actually download it from a website and then just install it and um, there are a couple things that you need to 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 do which is going to be in the next part of this video um, because it won't really be like Mac OS will not allow you to run that thing without doing some like you know security related stuff anyway so with that uh, software installed the, you'll have inertia scrolling smooth scrolling uh, which would have been otherwise uh, be like the, like if you don't have that software the scrolling of this by default is kind of like jittery and like you know um, very very it stutters and it's not it's barely usable I, I almost returned this because of that but until I found this software and the only other um, problem that I have for this um, mouse I mean trackball is that when you it rattles when you scroll up right now it doesn't and the reason for that is that uh, there's a hack that I did and I found it on reddit that you need to put either like some kind of uh, but to me I use um, like you know small pieces of scotch tape that white thing in there that's scotch tape like three or four layers of it and they can it didn't totally eliminate it I think but it eliminate most of it so that's the only other hack that you need to do in order to make this much better than what it is out of the box so um, the if you're <laughs> like a hundred fifty dollar trackball right I know it's amazingly expensive um, the the other alternatives which is again the cat Kensington trackball like slim blade or like you know whatever uh, to me it doesn't have this thing so not very usable so like again for a Mac if you're dependent on gestures I don't think that's something that you will even remotely consider and the only other probably um, al like alternative or again probably not I don't think it is is um, the like maybe comparable when it comes to the 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 smoothness of the uh, the the ball action is the the CST uh, two five four five the L track what they also known as the L track track ball made by I think clearly superior technologies I think is the name of the company that is also about hundred fifty dollars made in USA I mean who cares but even with um, again as a Mac user I don't think it's very it's a, it's something that you would want to consider since you don't have the gestures you don't have the, the scrolling aspect of it which is uh, so I don't know I, I don't think that's something that that's worth considering so again um, for ergonomic on a Mac this there could be there's an illusion that there's a lot of choices but in reality there's really less than a handful and for the trackball this is really just the only choice that you have everything else is not is to especially if you're dependent on gestures and uh, the, the touch aspect of the magic mice this is the only um, and for the keyboard again in my opinion this is really the only choice the good news is that Kinesis is actually coming out with a split version of this uh, they had it like on Kickstarter or something like late last year and that went out really quick but they're supposed to come out with the final like the mass produced version sometime this spring and me personally I'm waiting for that and hopefully that's that gives like you know something so because it's this I mean as you can see this has a large footprint and I wanted something a little bit smaller so I like, you know hopefully that split version um, will be will be something that I that would be sufficient will be better for my needs anyway uh, that's it um, um, I'll have again there's a next part of this video on how to set up the MOS software for the trackball um, yeah um, just to show you how to set up your 
gimbal mouse to work um, to work better with the Mac. So um, per recommendation of actually the company, um, they recommended downloading this Moss Moss tool uh, on your on your Mac. And this actually, see as you can see, the smooth without with I already have mine installed, and you can see how smooth the the um, scrolling is. If you actually don't have this, right? If you if you don't have it, right? See how janky it is, and like it's not. It's all. It's really very jarring to use. Um, so you actually want that. So um, the, to me, the only other thing that I needed to uncheck to change is uh, this reverse scroll. I mean, you you can probably tell what it does. Like, and if if it's if it's on, like you know the 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 scrolling is in the direction of where you made the the gesture. But if it's in reverse, um, uncheck. Um, it's the opposite. So. Which is weird. I thought like you know it should be the other way around, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So that's so yeah. You need this if you want to uh, to use the game ball as your main pointing device for your Mac. Um, so there are two ways to to download it to to install it. Either you download it here, yeah, and or using Homebrew. Um, and in my case, I think I I ended up trying both. But you can take, you know, brew, install Mac OS, Moss, dash, dash, cask. Uh, as a developer, this should not become a surprise. You can do that. But, like, you know, if you're, like, you know, a regular user, not a Mac, not, not a developer, you can do this same difference. I tried both, so I know it works. So once you inst once you download it, you all you really need to do is move it to your, it, it you know, it, it this comes up, and then you just copy, move it there. However, when you try to launch it, it won't. Like, you know, give, Mac gives you this error about, like, you know, having to need to update something, something, something. Um, that happens when when you, you try to run an application that is not officially through release through Apple or, like, you know, they don't have their certification or whatever. Because this is free software. You can actually download and compile it on Git, like you know, from GitHub. You can download the source code from GitHub and compile it yourself, and whatever. And that's the only reason why it's not why Apple is giving you that error. It's not like it's malware or anything like that. But yeah, it, that's the only reason. And the the way to to get around that is to um, under your um, under your system preferences is that here under security and privacy in general um you will see something here that like you know um some warning I, I don't have it here anymore because i already gave the permissions so it will be like some something in here that tells you that moss software wants to run on your software allow it anyway so you gotta have to click on that and then once you click on moss it will give you through go to throw wizard to essentially um, be able to um, allow the application to control your computer, it's not really controlling your computer. It's just it just um, allows it to become like a sort of a driver. So to, again, to allow you to be able to have that smooth scrolling, because that's the whole point of downloading that app to begin with, is to have that smooth scrolling. Um, the only probably the other other last thing that you want to enable is to have it launch or login so that the 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 thing would be running as soon as you log in and then you're gonna you don't have to run like you know manually run it and have the smooth scrolling so yeah so that's that's it um that's probably all you need to know to to get game ball running on your mac